Today we're going to be wrapping up our official lessons of Microsoft Excel. So we're going to be just dealing with a few miscellaneous items in Excel that you need to know for your certification exam. want to take a closer look at sorting. We've done sorting before, but we're going to be doing both sorting and filtering. We're going to talk about adding and renaming a worksheet to our workbook. We're going to import a text file into our document. We're going to show you how to set an indent within a cell. We're going to add pictures to our document. We're going to change the color theme and then set document properties. In order to do today's lesson, we need to open a file. And since this isn't directly a lesson from the book, we're going to have to go to class files. So if you will, please go to class files. IIT and Excel and you should see two files that are here. What I'd like you to do first of all is take this file called ice cream text. We're not going to open the file. It might just say ice cream. And what I want you to do is I want you to drag that file to your documents folder. So drag ice cream to documents and then the next thing I want you to do is open the list file. So double click on lists and then we need to save this file to your uh, computer. So we're going to do a file save as, direct this to documents, create a folder with today's date, and then add your initials to the end of the file name. Now in this file you're going to see that there are multiple sheets along the bottom here and we're going to be working first of all with the peach sheet um, but I do want to do a few comparisons to the differences between peat and Voyager. Um, as you do the practice activities, the G-Metrics practice activities, you may notice that sometimes when you're sorting and filtering data, sometimes you need to select the data that you're sorting and filtering, and other times you don't. Let me explain when you do need to select and when you can get by without selecting. It all has to do with the row above your table. In this case, the table headers are in row 4. In other words, the labels that explain what the data is in each column. So the table headers are in row 4. So if I needed to select, which in this table I will, I would select from row 4 down to the end of the data, whatever it may be. Now the reason why I have to select in this table is because if I look above row 4 at row 3, you'll notice that there is data in row 3. It's not simply a blank cell or a blank row. There is information on row 3. Because there's information on row 3, if I want to sort or filter this data, I'm going to need to select it. Let's go to Voyager for a second. Here in Voyager, <clears throat> my column headers are in row 5. Okay, These are my labels for my table. But notice, above row 5, row 4 is blank. Well, in this scenario, I could sort my table without selecting my table. Because the blank cell is above it, Excel will be able to accurately guess as to what cells are in your table. So as such, I could sort this without having to first select it. So on the PEAT sheet, because there is information on row 3, if I try to sort this, it's going to inaccurately guess what columns in, is my table. So you can see that it has selected all the way up to row 1, which is not part of my table. 
So having said that, here's what I want to do. The instruction right here says sort by item type. So what I'm going to do is I need to select my data. And now I want to sort by item type. So I'm going to go up to my sort and filter. And I'm going to do a custom sort. You do want to make sure that it says up here, my data has headers. Okay, that's going to give this drop down list here. Okay, it's going to give the names of the columns. So, in other words, item type, description, etc. We are sorting by item type, so I'm going to select item type and I click OK. You will notice that it does indeed sort by item type. So, cat food comes first and alphabetically speaking leashes come last. Let's go to our next tab. I'm going to the Voyager tab. This time it's going to say sort by description. Then it adds another item, filter by ending inventory less than 10. Now first of all do I need to select my data? Technically, no I don't because row 4 is empty. If you're unsure, it's always safe to select the data. So if you want to select your data, you can do so. Okay. We're going to go up to Custom Filter and Sort. We're going to click on the Sort. And it's telling us to sort by description. So I make sure my data headers are turned on. Then I can say Sort by Description. It doesn't say ascending or descending, so I leave it at the default settings. I click OK. My list is now sorted by description. Now it says filter by ending inventory. Okay. So first thing I need to do is I need to come up here and turn my filter on. So I turn on my filter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for something called ending inventory. And as I look across the top, I sure enough, I do see ending inventory. The instructions say the ending inventory less than 10. A couple ways I could do this, because there's not too many check marks, I could uncheck all the items that were not less than 10. But the better way to do this would be to go to my number filter, choose less than, and enter the number 10. When I click OK, that should show all of the items that have a number less than 10 in the ending inventory column and you can see that there is a filter applied. Let's go to the next item, stocks. Here I want you to sort by company name that's this column here. Then filter by return on equity, that's this column here, as positive. Okay. Well, let's think about that for a second. Okay. A positive number is any number that is greater than zero. Okay. That would be considered a positive number. So, Let's do our, our sort first. I'm going to select the data. Again, I don't have to because there is a blank row up above. Okay, Row 3 is blank, so I wouldn't have to select the data, but to be safe, I did. I go to sort and filter and do my custom sort. It says to sort by company name. So let's sort by company name. It doesn't say ascending or descending, so we're going to leave it as it is, which is ascending. And I click OK. Now it says to filter, so I'm going to turn my filter on. By return on equity, so I need to find my return on equity column. And it wants me to choose the positive numbers. So another way to say that are the numbers that are greater than zero. I click OK and now you will only see the numbers in this list 
okay, whose return on equity is not negative. Okay, so the ones that are positive. On the camping tab, this one I'm going to let you do by yourself. You're going to sort by description. That's this column here. Filter by ending inventory. That's this column here. Over 45. So I'm going to give you a few seconds. You may want to pause the video in order to sort this table and filter this table. So at this point your item should be in order by description and there should be a filter applied in which the only numbers that are showing are those that are greater than, that means over, greater than 45. Let's go to patient list. Alright, on this sheet we are going to sort by patient name. The instructions get a little bit hazy here, so let me help you with this. We're going to filter by dog, so dog or cat, and then by Siberian Husky. Well, that really should read by breed of Siberian Husky. So in other words, we're going to filter by breed. Specifically, I'm looking for Siberian Husky. And then I want to add an additional criteria that will be my Labrador Retrievers. So let's do this one together. Let's sort by uh, patient name. First question, do I need to select the data? Hopefully you said no. Some people get tricked by this because row 3 is green, it has a color, but there's no data, there's no text typed into it. So technically, I don't have to select it. If you want to play it safe, you always can select your data. That's, there's never a time when that's problematic, so we can select the data. I'm going to sort and filter, and I'm going to do a sort by patient name, and we're going to leave it as ascending, so I click OK. That takes care of the first part. Now, the second part does want me to do a filter, so I'm going to turn my filter on. The first filter is to, says filter by dog. Well, if I'm going to filter by dog, that means I need to use the column header dog or cat. And I'm going to uncheck my cat. I click OK. So now all that's displaying are the dogs. Now, what they want to do is do a secondary filter in which I filter by Siberian Husky. Well, that's my breed column. So in my breed column, I'm going to uncheck all the breeds. So I'm going to uncheck the select all here. And then I'm going to come down and find the Siberian Husky. When I click OK, it now shows only the Siberian Husky dogs. Now, one last thing they want to do, and that is they wish to also show the Labrador Retriever. So I'm going to go back to my breed filter and I'm going to check in addition to Siberian Husky I'm also going to check Labrador Retriever and when I click OK it now shows me a list of all the Labrador Retrievers and Siberian Husky and it is still in order by patient name. I'm going to save my work. You don't need to close at this point. We've got a few more things we're going to do. All right, the next thing we're going to do is add a new worksheet to our workbook here. Real simple to do that. We click the little plus down here to add a new sheet. And we're going to rename the sheet. You could either right click on it and choose rename, or what I typically do is I double click on the sheet. And let's call this ice cream, I C E. C-R-E-A-M, ice cream, is the name that we're going to give this sheet. And 
the reason why I gave it the name ice cream is because we are going to um, import some text related to ice cream into this new blank sheet. So on the certification exam, it's pretty likely that you will need to import some text from a text file. And you will want to add this to your notebook. Um, the place where you insert text from another file is the data tab in Microsoft Excel. So the data tab. And if you're bringing text in from a text file, you're going to choose this from text option. So I'm going to click on from text. The file at this point should be in your documents folder. That was one of the files that we dragged to documents. So I am going to, once I find documents, I'm going to click on documents over here. And here's the file called ice cream that we're wanting to import. So I'm going to click on ice cream and import. And a wizard begins. It's a three-step wizard. In the certification exam, it will probably tell you whether it's a delimited text or a fixed width text. Delimited simply means there's something in between the fields. In other words, comma or tab, it'll be it'll say it's a comma delimited or a tab delimited uh, file. And so this is a delimited file. And so we're going to choose the delimited option and I click OK or next, excuse me. And then I have to tell it what um, is the delimiter. Is it a tab or is it a comma? Okay. Now, if you look down here, this is your preview. So what you want to do is, let's say that I didn't have tab selected. All right, and I had commas here. You can see that this is not being divided up into columns. So when I click on tab, now I can see in my preview that it, it, it is indeed being divided into columns. So even if the test question doesn't tell you what the delimiter is, you should be able to tell based on the preview. But more than likely it's going to tell you it's a tab delimited file or a comma delimited file. All right. So since it is a tab delimited file, I'm going to make sure that only tab is selected. I click Next. The third step, you'll always just accept exactly what's here. Don't make any changes on this last step. All right. Um, I rarely, even in real life, do I ever really make changes here. So I'm going to click Finish. It's going to ask you where do you want to put this data, and so the A1 cell is where I want to put it. Okay. Um, on the certification exam, it may give you a specific cell. So if it said import the data into A20, you would click on A20 and that would bring it in there. Uh, but we're going to leave it as A1 and we're going to click OK. And that brings our data into our spreadsheet. You can sort this. I want to sort this by base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the data and I am going to choose sort. And you'll notice there that there is a sort button right here on the data tab. And I'm going to sort this by base and click OK. That puts all the chocolates together, all the van others together, and all the vanillas together. All right, this next thing we're going to do, we're going to do just for the sake of doing it. There's really no um, logical reason to do this, but on the certification exam, it's not unusual to see a question where you want to indent in a cell. So let's say we wanted to indent all the flavor cells. I want to indent it one place or two places. Well, if you go to your home tab, now for this, you are going to need to select from A2 down to A12 because I want to do this for each of the cells. And what I want to do is I want to indent the text. Well, on your home tab, underneath alignment, there's this button that says increase indent. This is very much like the increase indent that we worked with in Word. 
if you click on this increase in dent, it moves it in by one place. If you wish to indent it by two, I click on increase indent again, and that will indent this by two spots. Now, if you're not sure if it's two or three or four, there is a way that you can look and see the exact number. If instead of clicking on the increase and dent button, instead if you go to the alignment settings dialog box, you will see that it, on looking at horizontal indent here, you'll see that it's uh, aligned to the left, but it's indented and here's the number of places that it's been indented. So if you were told to indent it by three, I could bump this up by three. In the same way, I could click on the increase indent three times. That's assuming that it started off by being not indented at all. I click OK, and now all of my flavors are indented by three places. I am going to resize column A, double clicking on column A, just in order to get the um, width of the column to fit the text in um, that location there. Place the um, RBMA logo to the right here. So I've gone to the Insert tab on my ribbon, and this is a picture that's on my computer, so I'm going to click on Pictures. And this should take me to my Pictures folder. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the RBMA logo. Um, yours should be pretty visible pretty quickly. Um, this is my home computer, so I've got a lot of pictures that are here. I'm going to choose eventually that RBMA logo file, click Insert, and then I can move that logo wherever I may want it. In this case, I'm going to move that logo over into the F1 column, the top left corner of that F1 column. Now one of the other things that we may want to do is add a hyperlink to my document. Now in this case my tabs that are down here are very disjointed. In other words, they're not really connected. I've just added a bunch of different sorting things together. But in a real spreadsheet, these things are going to be related in some way, shape, or form. So it's not going to be unusual for where you might want to create a link from one tab to the other. So we are going to create a hyperlink. I'm going to create a hyperlink to my camping tab, just randomly picking um, one of the tabs that I want to create a link to. So let's click on cell A2, this chocolate, and I want to create a hyperlink to the camping tab. So I'm going to go to the insert ribbon, insert, and we're going to click on hyperlink just like we did in Word. And in this case, because I'm linking within the same worksheet, I'm going to click to place in this document. And so here you will see the various sheet names, okay, Pete, Voyager, Stocks, Camping. I'm going to click on camping because I just said a moment ago that that's what I wanted to link to. But you may be asked to link to a specific cell in the camping worksheet. So for example, if the test question said, link to the A5 cell of camping, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here where it says A1, and I'm going to change that to be whatever the test question might say, in this case A5. And what that's going to do is create a link to the A5 cell for camping. I click OK. The link does indeed exist. You'll see that it's changed the look of it. And to actually follow it, you just simply click on the link, and it should take you um, to the A5 cell. Now, unfortunately, with the one that I happen to pick, A5 is a hidden column. And so it really doesn't, it takes me to camping, but it takes me to a hidden column cell, so that's why you see this line that's here. That's fine. Okay. The point being is that the link was followed from ice cream to this cell. So here I am on the camping tab, and one of the next thing I want to do is I want to change the color theme of this particular sheet. So if you will, let's go to the 
themes are a part of page layout. Page layout is our look for themes. And so we've got our themes button here. And one of the options that I do see is the option to change the color theme. So I'm going to click the drop down on color theme. And let's change the color theme to be, oh, let's pick something red violet is something that will be a drastic difference from what we had before. I'm going to pick red violet as the color theme for my camping tab. So I'm going to click on this red violet and I'll see a drastic difference, a change to the look of this particular spreadsheet. All right. The last item that I wish to wrap up with is something called document properties. We dealt with document properties in Microsoft Word. We have document properties here in Excel, no different than what we did before. As you may remember from Microsoft Word, we get to our properties, document properties, by clicking on the file menu. And our properties are listed over here on the right hand side. Just like in Word, if the property that you're specifically being asked to modify is not here, we can click on Show All Properties. Some of the ones that are common are the Comments property, the Title property, the Status property, um, the Subject property. All right. So let's click in the Subject property. Let's say that's the property in question. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put in practice exercise practice exercise alright practice exercise is now part of that document property I'm done with this, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow here. It takes me back to my spreadsheet. Let's save this file. And this does wrap us up for this particular lesson, so you can close this file and get ready to upload that to EndGrade. Today we took a look at sorting and filtering. Um, and how to do those couple things. We went a little more in depth with it than we've looked at before. We've showed you how to add a new worksheet and rename it. The one new thing that we did definitely talk about is import text file. Hopefully you have added that to your notebook. Uh, we've talked a little bit about setting the indent of a cell, adding a picture to your document, changing the color theme, and setting document properties. Most of these things were pretty much the same as what we might have done in Word. The first three things were a little bit different and the um, uh, the rest setting indent pretty much the same as Word. Insert a picture, color themes, document properties, same types of things that we did in Word.